Welcome back to another look. I'm Cynthia Barnes here with Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Jameson, a Tuskegee Airman. You spent much time in World War II in North Africa, uh, Italy, and Sicily. Let's talk about that time. Well, our first mission was with this 33rd fighter group dive bombing the Germans in, who were in this little island of Pantelleria, which is a small island between North Africa and Sicily. And shortly after we entered into combat, the uh, army over, overcame uh, Pantelleria. The Germans withdrew to Sicily, and then we proceeded to uh, on combat missions into Sicily, uh, with, we flew mostly close, close support missions, dive bombing missions. We would have a 500 pound bomb. On a plane, just like, a plane like this. On the bell, on the where the belly tank is, we would put a 500 pound bomb on on each plane. So with the a group of three squadrons, four squadrons, who do quite a bit of damage by bombing the ground charges, which we had to be very careful since, because they were, to not have a, hit the wrong target, hit our own troops who were very close to the front lines where the Germans were. So you had to be very careful not to hit you hit your own troops. Right, not hit our own troops and to make sure that we, and usually we had no problem because we were, the Germans were shooting back at us with that 88 millimeter cannons. So we inspired quite a bit of uh, anti aircraft fire from the Germans who knew what we were trying to do. We were trying to drop those 500 pound bombs on their positions. So that's what we, for most of our missions with the 99th in uh, Sicily and after the Germans withdrew from Sicily, uh, they, we pursued them into the lower boot of Italy and as they gradually withdrew up, we drove them back up, up the boot of Italy and my final missions were over patrolling over the Anzio beachhead. I was leading the squadron of a patrol over Anzio, which was all the American battleships were making this uh, invasion, landing, landing on the beachhead. Of course, the Germans were trying to stop the the assault on the beachhead. And so our, our job was to patrol and protect the uh, our American forces at Anzio. Well, this particular day in January 44, the uh, ground controller called me as a flight leader. Uh, Red Flock leader, we have some bogey coming down from the north. And it's a funny thing, my, the, the squadron, they could all hear this same message to me. I was the only one to speak to the ground to tour the to avoid confusions. And, I, 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 and they said, uh, we have bogeys coming down, they're, they're at 20,000 feet. We were about 12,000 feet. So I said, see all my buddies, we were flying a pretty loose formation, but everybody's head was start looking up to see if they could spot, because you don't want to be attacked from above, as if the guy on top has the advantage over the guy down here. He has speed when he drives and he can piss it. So that, that got everybody's attention. I bet it did. So, <laughs> And so I finally spotted the uh, the Germans, 
in Isotown at least 22 German planes. I probably had very high little spats, and I had a flight of about 12, I think. I, I had 13 or 14. Or so. Somebody had to go back and had trouble. So we had this, we were out number two to one. And uh, we started start, start climbing towards the meeting, but we couldn't climb fast enough to get to their altitude. And their mission was to dive bomb the the Abishan, the American troops. So there was no way we could stop them from doing their dive bombing. But I say, well, my my best shot is to intercept them when they came off their off their dive bombing run, and that's what happened. Uh, they came down from twenty thousand feet and died their bomb, and and then to head back. They turned back. They head back up towards Rome, and that's when we intercepted them. Uh, they're going back up towards Rome. They're coming this way at 12,000. So we did a, what we call a split S. It's like an inverted half a loop. I turn upside down and come down. It's and, over. And so I, my timing was so, was so good. I, I did my split S. I came down and I... I I tried to watch the Germans at the flights as I was coming. But when you're doing this, you're on the other side of it. And then as I did my maneuver, came out of it, I, looked, I was just above the treetops then, about three or 400 feet high. And I looked around, I didn't see anybody. And then I, I said, where the heck is everybody? <laughs> I kicked my plane up on the side and looked down in the cockpit of a German plane. And he looked up and saw me. <laughs> and he was trying to get away. I got on his tail and I was letting go with my 50 caliber machine guns. There's three guns and three guns in each wing. So I had six guns. And my, my, to my misfortune, the guns jammed. And suddenly, I had only one gun was shooting. Five of my, five of my guns stopped shooting. But I was hitting, hitting this German plane. We were just above the treetops. We were two couple of hundred feet. And uh, and and I, as the leader, I was in the front. And that's what happened. The rest of my guys were in perfect position for their their big squadron of twenty-two planes. And that's why we ended up getting five aircraft. I got treasure for a damage. I hit that mine, but I never saw him go down. But the, some of the other fellows were in perfect position, right on the tail of Germans. And that those were the first. That was the first time I had actually been that close to a, a, attacking you know, a German aircraft because we just didn't encounter them. Uh, we had such a high uh, air superiority, and that was the first time I had shot at a German plane in all the months I'd been overseas. But I did get traded for the damage, but my buddies, they got some definite kills. So we got five on that mission, and then th that afternoon, my buddy, James Riley, he ran and encountered a similar situation. They got three. So on that one day, January 27th, 44, we got traded for eight German planes destroyed. But you, 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 you hung in there. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Jameson has to say about the movie Red Tails. We'll be right back.